welcome to Take Two Radio Music. I'm Pam, your host. And I'm hoping I'm not going to have computer problems here because things are just moving slow. Uh, This normally happens on a Monday, and today's Wednesday, so get with it, Internet people. (laughs) Today I have the pleasure to have with me a special guest. She's a singer, songwriter, and producer, and her name is Erica Kane. Welcome, Erica, to the show. Well, then again, (laughs) sorry, Erica, hold with me, please. There we go. I think it's coming through. Are you with me? All right. I'm here. I'm here. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be one of those days. I don't know. I think it's because I, I live in Chicago, and we've been having a lot of bad storms, and the internet mm-hmm. has been acting up for the past couple of weeks, so it's very irritating when I'm doing a show and all of a sudden it sticks and I can't go anywhere, <laughs> do right. anything. I, I can imagine. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome, and thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join me. I'm, I'm so excited to be speaking with you right now. I absolutely love, 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 love your music, just as many others do. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you strive for, right? <laughs> That's right, yep. <laughs> well, I've always liked to start out the show with a little background on my guest. So when did you start singing? Well, I started singing and, and learning that I could sing around the age of nine, or t- nine and ten. Um, <clears throat> I would actually go out into um, the backyard or the woods uh, where where I grew up, and I would just sing at the top of my lungs, and it was kind of like, okay, I, I when do I tell my parents? When do I tell anybody? So I did have, you know, those moments as a child, like, this is really what I want to do, but, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm scared to, to put it out there. And then my family, thank goodness, um, are musicians and and they would travel on the weekends and and perform and um, my father's a songwriter so it really made me feel comfortable and I I just came out with it one day and it became a passion you know throughout my life until this point and I decided to pursue it um, after high school I went to college for one year and um, I just wasn't you know, with the, the same program as 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 maybe the the pressures of society, and I was like, I, I really have to do what I love here. So that's when right, I made that right. decision. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you decided to share that with your parents, and and with having parents in the music business, it could work one way or another. They're either going to fully support that, or they're going to say. Uh, no, you have no idea how hard this is. Wait till you're older. Make your decision then. So it's a good mm-hmm. thing that you know they were all there to support you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm very blessed. They they definitely had their moments of you know being nervous, but um, oh sure. You know, fortunately, yeah. fortunately, I I was always you know protected. So so yeah, I'm very thankful. Now, what type of music did you grow up around? I grew up around everything. I mean, everything that had soul is is really what was around me. My my mother started in a church choir, and it developed into um, a full band with ten singers and horn sections, and yeah. um, just this beautiful production. And then. Um, the the people in the church wanted them to go on the road, so they ended up doing Top 40, Classic Rock, uh, Broadway, and, you know, I was right in the front row, you know, dancing wow, away yeah. as a child. So um, I really grew up with everything um, as far as being, you know, as pre- as a preference when, when I was growing up, I gravitated towards artists such as um, Aaliyah, um, Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, I felt like his message um, through his music was was huge, and I feel like it's something that every artist should strive for, definitely. Exactly, exactly. I think Michael Jackson's music will influence people for a long, long, long time to come. 
I mean, he's yeah. just one, you know, artist out there that can do that to people, and it's it's just a blessing for so many. It is. Yes. Now, did you ever end up taking any kind of singing classes, or is this still all natural? I never took any singing classes. Um, like I was saying earlier, I kind of just started discovering it when I would I would mm-hmm. play um, Mariah Carey's earlier albums, and I would just uh, she blew my mind. By the way, I mean, uh, yeah, her her talent, and especially in that time, was just out of this world. So, and I, you know, I would try to mimic what she was doing because I. I just wanted to. I wanted to sing, and um, I was like, you know what? Uh, this is really, this is really what I want to do here. <laughs> um, Mariah, Mariah Carey is is um, her Whitney Houston. You know that time. Mm-hmm. There was a period of time where um, the, those artists were icons and and, and right. bigger than bigger than their voice. So. That's so true, and I'll tell you, even those that can't sing would always try to mimic them. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) We all think we're singers, you know. It's funny because you don't really hear yourself singing, you know. You think you're doing it all on key, but then, you know, people around you are like, you know, can you not sing out loud? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, you got to you got to let it out sometimes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always tell my husband that I love music and I love to sing it. I love to play it. I, you know, love to listen to it and that. So, if you don't like the way I sing, then close your ears. I just love it. You know, you get into it. <laughs> you feel it and it just has to come out like you said. So, okay. thankfully yeah. there's people like you out there that can actually sing. So, <laughs> oh, well. Uh, Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, did you ever learn how to play any instruments? I played the flute in middle school, um, in, into junior high school. Um, right now I'm learning the guitar. Um, my my issue with it is I think I'm better than I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> because... When I pick it up, it's so natural for me that I that it's like, oh, I got this. So I don't practice enough. Um, but it's something I really want to hone in on, especially to connect with my songwriting. Um, but I did do um, choir all through school and high school, jazz choir, girls choir. So it was it was always a big part of my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it does help. I know I've heard from a lot of people I've interviewed that use either the piano or the guitar or something to write music. It does help them along. And a lot of them learn later, like you are. You know, they Mm -hmm. started out singing and decided, well, an instrument would be good, and that's what they do. So keep going at it. Yes, definitely. Now, Mm -hmm. your release of Because I Love You in 2009 brought you a ton of attention from mainstream and fans alike. What a way to start. I mean, did it just blow your mind? Yes. (laughs) The way that my (laughs) fan base, and and I have such a loyal fan base. I mean, right from the start, it was just like, we love Eric Jane and, and the sound and the music and um, that song, Because I Love You, actually turned into, um, you know, like a stepper's tune. They play it at a lot of weddings, and it's really big in, in the southern the southern states. So, yeah, it was a great way to start. Most definitely, and I can see that being a great wedding song and that for um, people. Um, there's a lot of your music actually has made it out there that other people are using and, and just – Oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. excuse me. My throat closed up. I have bad okay. allergies. I'm sorry. Every Today is one of those days, like I said. So. Right. Song, <laughs> songs well, like good, Here With good... Me. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying it's a good day to um, to listen to my song, throw it all away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. 
<laughs> but songs mm-hmm. like Here With Me and For The Lovers, you know, they quickly climbed the Billboard hip hop charts. And if that wasn't great enough, Here With Me also landed on VH1's Love and Hip Hop. And you were just like rolling right out of the gate. How many emotions did you go through? Did it feel surreal to you? You know, it it still does, actually, because the shows that I'm on, sometimes I get caught up in the show, and at the end of it, you know, I'll be walking around the house, and then, you know, my promo will show up and my song will, will pop back up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, I, you know, all the emotions come up again, and, and so it it definitely continues to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, because you have some – Oh my God, I can't talk now. You have <laughs> more of your music on other shows. You have Make It for the Hollywood Exes. It's a theme song. I mean, there's a lot of indies out there that have had their music placed on shows as you did previously, but to have a theme song, that's beyond awesome. That has to be one of the most rewarding things for you. Yes, definitely. Um, my my fan base from, from that show and from VH1 and, and the other shows are growing a leaps and bounds um, because of the theme song. And it's really connecting with a lot of women because of the message. And, you know, um, the the Exes franchise is, is branching off. Um, I'm not sure if you heard of the their new um, show. It's Atlanta Exes, which just premiered Monday night. And they're also uh-huh. using my song, the remix version of the same song from Hollywood Exes. So... That's just extra exciting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Those VH1 execs love you to death, don't they? <laughs> I guess. I mean, it's, you know, the music. That's why I'm so thankful that the fans, you know, are connected with me through my music because it's got to be the music, you know, that, that people, at the end of the day, you know. Exactly. Now, do you think it's easier when you release a song and someone wants to use it instead of maybe them coming to you and asking you to write one for it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've actually never had um, someone that come up to me and ask to write something separately. I've actually even never. That's that's interesting. That That would be something cool. But, yes, it is easier, and it's more exciting because, it's your art. It's your album. It's it's what it's everything that has to do with you, and if it mm. relates to you know a show or women or the world or whatever, it's just like a plus. Yeah, and it's unexpected too because if they came to you and asked you to write a song, then you knew what was happening. But when it's you know they come and you, they say you know we want to use this song, it's like oh really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yay. <laughs> I, I knew that's why I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Well, recently you released two singles, but I want to start with It's There, a duet with Brian McKnight. Tell us more about the song and how you and Brian ended up working together and what it was like working with him. Well, this song and the whole experience is definitely something I'll never forget. Um, we were just connected by an acquaintance and um he knew who I was as an artist and a songwriter and he seemed um really interested once we sent him the record. Um and a month later we were in the studio and it was just very natural, very easy. It was like we had worked together for years. I mean, of course I had to calm down because uh, I grew up listening to, you know, most of his music. Right, so right. It, you know, so mm. when he went in the studio and brought his part to life, it was like, whoa, this is this is amazing. And um, the song has been charting in the top ten charts internationally on radio, so um, I couldn't be more happy with that record. Oh, it's definitely magic. I think you guys did that duet just beautifully, and I absolutely fell in love with the song the minute I heard it. Oh, good. Good, good. Yeah, it's very, um, it's one of a kind, you know. It, it just, it, it's almost like, a, you know that song, um, 
the Aladdin, the song from Aladdin, the Disney movie. I don't remember, but it it has that feeling, and it has that it brings it all together. And I don't I don't think there's enough songs like that right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah, your music puts out a lot of positive messages, and I believe that that's one of the best things that you can do. When you sit down to write a song, what usually comes first, the lyrics or the music or a little bit of both? Well, usually the feeling, um, like the emotion that I want to portray in general is is what comes out. And once I get the, the feeling of it, then it's usually the melody. And then after the melody um, usually comes the lyrics, and the lyrics really are what bring out the emotion um, mm-hmm. inside of me. It, it happens pretty much every time. And um, and then once the lyrics are done, it's it, it only gets better because then I get to perform it, and, you know, it only gets more exciting. <laughs> Definitely. And... and- is it something that usually happens quickly or do you start writing the song and, and put it aside and then maybe go back to it? I try not to do that um, because there's a lot of songwriters, um, you know, understand about the moment of, of your attachment to the record. Like you don't want, you don't want to lose that moment. It's good to step away for, for a while and, you know, for a day or something. Um, but there's a moment there when you're connecting with the song and, and you really don't want to let too much time pass by. Um, there right. have been times when there's a time crunch and things like that, there have been times where you really have no choice. But um, usually if it's taking too long, it's not, you know, it, I'm forcing it. and it, And for me, it's not meant to be type of thing because when right. a song when it's when when i write a song really fast that's when you know it's it's like whoa okay it's just coming out this is this needs to happen so i just kind of go by that formula go with the flow right <laughs> yes exactly. now the other single is throw it all away and i see you tweet a lot about it by saying like things like life is too short to be sweating it all, throw it all away. And it's such a true statement. Now, both Mm -hmm. of these songs will be on your upcoming album, Through the Veil. How do you choose the songs that make it to an album? Well, there are just songs that are just really destined. I don't know how to explain it. There are a handful of songs that, that are just part of, the project part of the transformation and and it represents exactly you know what you're going through and then there's there's a few songs that um you're not sure and then usually I have a few songs that are like you know what they're cute they're nice but I like to create complete albums I think maybe that's what makes me different in a way because you know I really adore the time in music where everybody's album was just amazing uh, from start to finish. And that's right. really, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think as an artist, that's, that's how it should be. That's your, you you spend a year and a half going through life and it, it, or a couple of years going through experiences. And that's where the great music comes from. It's not, it's not packaging up and branding it and throwing it out there. And, you know, so that's, that's the way I go about it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad you say that because there's been times throughout, you know, the years that you fall in love with a single that's on the radio. You go out and you buy the album and you listen to it and then, you know, you're all happy because that single's on there and you listen to the next song and you're like, wait, what happened here? You know? <laughs> right. It was like they, they put everything into the single and then kind of shortchanged the rest of the album. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but um, it's happening more lately. Um, but you know, p- the fans are looking for depth. They're, you know, even though there's a perception out there of you know what what sells and what doesn't sell, 
I'm in I'm in touch, fortunately enough, I'm able to be in touch with the you know, the world through the internet and you know, the fans are saying the opposite. They're looking for something real and, and something that has meaning. So, you know, it's important. Yeah, I have to agree with that. And I like that you release these songs as singles, but then they end up on an album because I think that you probably get a lot of feedback when you release it as a single first. Right. Yep, absolutely, for sure. Plus, as fans... (laughs) <laughs> we like things fast. Okay, I love that song. Bring on the next one. You know, when you throw it out as a single, we don't mm-hmm. have to wait as long for an album because an album doesn't happen overnight. I mean, a song doesn't even happen overnight for that matter, but especially a full right. album. Yep, yep. That's exactly why we did that. Um, we put Throw It All Away because it's so upbeat and, and uplifting, and, you know, I really want people to get an idea you know, of the album and, and really get excited about the album. So that's why we spread it out like that. And and you're right, the album, uh, albums do take time, and this one happened to take more time than, than my previous albums, but that's why, I, that's why I have a really good feeling about it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, you know, a perfectionist sometimes... when it comes to your music? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I'm so bad. Um, <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I think every artist can't really completely let go of their perfectionism, right. but it's something I'm working on because, honestly, like my song, life, life is too short, and, and you got to be in the moment. It's, it's just going to go away. So <laughs> I'm working right. on it. Right. <laughs> well, as I've told other guests that I've had on my show, you know, when you guys put out a song, there's times that even after you've put it out, you think, oh, maybe I should have did that differently or I should have sung this differently or whatever. We don't hear that. You know, we love what you put out there. So just remember that <laughs> and <then> you won't <laughs> be so hard on yourself the next time. Oh, that means so much to me, especially right now, because I almost couldn't sleep last night. I've been tossing and turning over this one um, chord in my song and this one oh. section, and um, that makes me feel better because really, I, I don't want to drive myself crazy, so thank you. Right. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yes. Now, how do you feel your music has changed since you started? How do I feel it's changed? Musically, like mean? how much, you know, what have you learned differently since you started? Well, my number one lesson is 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 calm down and and you know, take <laughs> it easy on yourself. Um my music has transformed in a way that I, it's hard for me to explain because I'm still um, I'm still embracing it all. I mean, I thought my this album was going to go one way a year ago, and ever since writing, it, I mean, my life's transformed, my career's transformed, my attitude has completely changed. So my music has completely changed. Um, not not in a way where you won't. I mean, you'll know that all of it is Erica Kane, but right, right. it's really the yeah, it's really the message that has changed, and I and I don't feel like I am so much fighting the fight and and out there battling to be heard and to be in the mainstream and and, and all. It's more now where I am, you know. I'm sitting back looking at my career. I'm like, wow, my career is unique. It's different. You know, I am successful, and um, it's time to really, you know, claim it, so to mm-hmm. speak. And and that's really um, the big difference on this upcoming album, Through the Veil. Yeah, it's, it's not easy these days. It, it is easy, and it's not easy because – there are so many indie artists out there that you're fighting each other to, you know, be heard. 
And it's not that you don't embrace the other artists. It's just that, you know, you have to make your voice louder in a way so that people can hear you and not be going from one artist to the next artist to the next artist, and maybe you don't even get heard. I think you've come out screaming, so... Oh, great. You've I done love very it. well. <laughs> Good. Good. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, is there someone in the music industry or even outside of it that gave you the best piece of advice when you started out that you would like to pass along to new artists? Um, I can't think of anybody specifically other than my mother really, you know, telling me and teaching me to take no prisoners, so to speak, and and really stand up, protect yourself, uh, know your business, um, especially women, females, know every part of your business and know how powerful you truly are, um, and for artists. Artists are are very powerful, and and there's sort of there's sort of a stereotype where you know artists are just artists, but mm-hmm. artists are the ones that really pay for everything, and 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 aren't really told everything that they are in charge of. So really know your business, know um, everything you're getting into, protect yourself, and. And take no prisoners. Don't let people change you and tell you, well, uh, you know, you have to, you have to be this. You have to look like this. You have to sound like this. That just means that they want to limit your time and they want to take as much money from you as possible. Oh, sorry yeah. To be, sorry to be so so real about it, but. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great advice. I mean. I've heard that, and I'm not going to mention any particular show or artist, but, you know, people that have gone on these different singing shows, and uh, they go on as one type of person and are made out to be another type of person by that show and by that label that wants to sign them. And that's where you lose yourself and you lose your music and you lose your passion and a lot of them end up walking away from it and starting all over and become an indie again. Right. Yeah, you see, it does happen. A, a lot of um, major artists that have been around for years are now independent, but most people don't yeah. see or know that because they, you know, they don't see it. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, because they don't go on Twitter and say, hey, I'm not with a record label anymore. I'm an indie now, <laughs> you know, right. when they've been around for years. So, you exactly. know, they just fans just assume it. But it's it's not the case. I, I do see a lot of the bands that I listened to growing up um, that are out there on the road now and doing tours and stuff like that. They are not signed with a label. And a lot of them actually are starting their own labels these days, which I think is a good thing because they still have control over what they do. Yes, I it it is happening everywhere. I mean, I don't. It's not really being publicized, but mm-hmm. that that is, in my opinion, that is going to be the new industry. I mean, it's the it's really the only way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I couldn't agree more. Now, have you ever? Um, sang or performed with your parents? Are they still performing? Uh, my father is still um, recording albums. He's still writing music. Um, my mother does it more for leisure, um, mm-hmm. but I've sang with them many, many occasions, weddings, you know, uh, parties, family gatherings, things like that. Um, I sang on my one of my father's albums, and I think I'm going to sing on his new album with him on oh a duet. Gosh, that he, that's so exciting! I know he's he, his his songwriting is is so deep and so beautiful that you know it's clear where I got I got a lot of my you know my writing abilities definitely from my my father. Ah, uh, well, congratulate him for me. That's wonderful. I will. I will definitely. Thank you. Now, who would be your number one person to work with next in the music industry, either behind the scenes or maybe even another duet? 
man. Um, always wanted to work with Justin Timberlake. Oh yeah, I, re- I could see that. Yeah, he's 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 an all around artist to me. I don't feel like he's ever lost his way. You know, he's expanded his horizon, and he's he really stays true to his music. So, and he's incredibly talented, of course. So, I would mm-hmm. say I would say Justin Timberlake. That would work for me. So when we're done with the interview, you take the podcast, you send it to him and let him listen to it. Maybe he'll right. give you a phone call. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> but now, he's gone know. into acting, too. And I have to say, you you know, because you're so talented and so beautiful, have you ever thought of going into acting? Thank you. I really have. It, it's something I want to try. Um, you know, my video, uh, my music videos were, you know, kind of my my first little gigs of acting. But it's something right. I definitely would love to get into. Not so much reality TV. Uh, more like no. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More like a major film. Um, you know, something really major and. Specific. I I appreciate act are really picky about uh, the movies that they you know like John, actors like Johnny Depp and um, Tom mm-hmm. Hanks and so um, that's that's where I would like to be if I ever you know go that far with it. But I'm interested. Wow. Well, I think it would be amazing to see you on screen, and maybe you could even do something like a Broadway play, you know, because you can sing in that too, like a musical. Oh, I would love to. I would love to. I love to do that. Uh, I definitely want to do a voiceover for for Disney. That's always been a dream of mine. Yeah, yeah. I could see that too. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. Okay, so send the podcast to everybody. <laughs> yes, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> Now, speaking of television, I have to ask you a question that you might find pretty funny. Probably won't even know what I'm talking about, but then again, you never know. Have you ever watched the soap opera, All My Children? You know, I know all about it because so many people watch it. Um, Yeah, yeah. Well, Susan Lucci played a character called Erica Kane, and she was one of the most loved ones on there, her character, and as an actress. So you both have that in common. Right, yes, I know. I'm surprised we haven't met yet. I'm sure sure that will happen one day. (laughs) Because I actually get sometimes people, oh, you know, they connect me with Susan Lucci. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah, only because Erica Kane was on there for, gosh, I don't know, 20, 30 years, something like that. You know, she basically grew mm-hmm. up on there, and, and now she play, wow. uh, Susan Lucci plays on uh, Devious Maid. So if you ever watch oh, that, okay. check it out. <laughs> is, that, is, that a soap, is that a soap opera as well? Um, it's a primetime show. It's on Lifetime. Right now they're on hiatus, but uh, it has uh, – so many great Latina actresses on there, and uh, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. You'll have to check it out one of these days, and maybe when the reruns come on or when they come back from hiatus and to their new oh, season. Okay. Cool, I'll do so, that. Yeah. yeah, that would be cool. Now, what would you like to say to your fans before I let you go? Any shout-outs you want to give? I just want to shout-out to all of my fans nationally, internationally, all my fans who support me on Twitter, I'm so grateful. Thank you for making my song in the top ten chart internationally. It's there. Don't forget to throw it all away when you're having a bad day and download my new single on Amazon and iTunes. And get ready for Through the Veil, which I'm so excited to share with my fans. They're in for a big treat. So that will be releasing September 26th. Oh, cool. I was going to ask you when that was coming out, and it kind of made it sound like it wasn't going to be soon, but September 26th <laughs> is right around the corner. So, yay. Yes, <laughs> I know. That's awesome. <laughs> How exciting I know, I'm getting, is that? I'm getting anxious and excited. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, for our listeners, please follow Erica on Twitter, and that's at Erica Kane. It's A-R-I-K-A-K-A-N-E. Also like her Facebook page at facebook.com slash Erica Kane Music, and check out her website, ericacane.com. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. You are truly, truly talented, and I look forward to anything that you have coming up in the future. I'd love for you to stay in touch with me, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you, Pam, so much for having me as well, and I'll definitely be in touch. And I really enjoyed the interview, and we'll we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you so much for that, and thanks for bearing with me with all the problems I had, but they finally went away towards the end, so <laughs> that's a good that's thing. Right. See? We just we just needed to chit chat. That's all. <laughs> I threw it all away. There we go. <laughs> that's right. Throw it all away. All right. Thank you so much, Pam. You're welcome. Take care. Have a good day. All right. You too. Right. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye bye. And for our listeners, stick around because I'm now going to play Erica's two songs that we just spoke about. And the first one is called It's There, featuring Brian McKnight.
It's There by Erica Kane featuring Brian McKnight. Such a beautiful song. My gosh, you get lost in it. Uh, next up is Throw It All Away by Erica Kane. <laughs> will be on her new album Through the Veil coming out September 26th so be sure to pick it up I know for a fact you're going to love each and every song that's going to be on that album so so much talent in that girl and I want to thank Erica and Kelly both uh, for joining me and setting up the interview Kelly for setting it up and I hope that you will all join me again on Monday, August 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for our Music Monday, where I will play the best of the best of the indies from around the world. And with that, I'm going to thank all of you for listening, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, and God bless each and every one of you. Take care. Bye-bye. Get connected with Take-Two Radio Music on Facebook or Twitter at Take-Two Radio Music, or for email updates on future shows, Follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2RadioMusic.com.